Hi everybody. As promised, this is a hopefully simplified version or clarifying version of what the heck a biconditional is and how it works. With any luck, we'll all get it because it's pretty fundamental to what we're doing right now. A biconditional is two conditionals in one. That's why it's called bi, as in bicycle having two wheels, or bipolar as in having two poles, or bi-legged as, anyway, you get the picture. So bicondition means it's got two conditions. And so let's start by looking at it as two separate conditions. What if I were to give you two separate conditions? The first of which was you can go to Jamaica if you pay for it. And the second condition being you cannot go to Jamaica if you don't pay for it. So the first statement is if you pay for it, then you can go to Jamaica. And you would contrapose that to if you're not in Jamaica, then you didn't pay for it. Because the first statement says, if you pay for it, you can go to Jamaica. And then the second one says, if you don't pay for it, then you cannot. So if you do not pay, then you cannot go to Jamaica. Right here. Uh -huh. So paying for it yourself is both the if antecedent and the then consequent of going to Jamaica. Paying is an antecedent, right? Uh -huh. yeah, pay. And then over here, paying for it is the consequent with Jamaica on the other side in both examples. So two statements, one that makes paying the antecedent for going to Jamaica and the other that makes paying the consequent of going to Jamaica makes this biconditional. So saying paying for the trip is the if and the then of going to Jamaica means the same thing. It means paying is the if antecedent and paying is the then consequent right side of going to Jamaica. It's if and then. So we could say the same bloody thing by just saying you can go to Jamaica if and only if you pay for it. And it'd mean the same thing. It would say if you pay for it, then you can go to Jamaica. If pay, then Jamaica. And only means then because you studied and you paid attention and you memorized that only means then. So then you pay for it. Then you pay for it if you go to Jamaica. Ta-da! So if and only if just means that this paying for it paying for it is both the if left side and the then only means then right side with Jamaica being on the opposite side of wherever the paying for it is. They're both on opposite sides of each other and then we contrapose them both. And that tells us, oh, this means I'm going to pay for it and go to Jamaica or go to Jamaica and pay for it. Or I'm not going to Jamaica, not paying for it, not paying for it, not going to Jamaica. I'm either going to do both things or I'm going to do neither of those two things. That's a both or neither, same sign by conditional. Because I've got the same sign on both sides of the horseshoe. So that's another way of looking at it is saying you're either going to have both or you're going to have neither. I'm going to have both. You're both going to pay for it and go or you're not going to pay for it and you're not going to go. You're not going to Jamaica because you didn't pay for it, or you're going to go to Jamaica and pay for it. You're getting both or you're doing neither. Ta-da! So you can say if and only if. You can say both or neither. Or you could have two separate statements. One that says if you pay for it, you can go. And one that says if you go, then you pay for it. If one of the terms in this, if one of the terms in the original statement or the original rules is negative, then we'll end up with what's called an opposite sign by conditional. Let's say I have a statement that says, Tom goes bowling if and only if his wife isn't pregnant. That means if his wife isn't pregnant, he'll go bowling. And it also means if Tom goes bowling, then his wife isn't pregnant. It means both those things. If his wife's not pregnant, he goes bowling. Contraposed, no bowling, she is pregnant. And also, if Tom goes bowling only, then, then his wife is pregnant. So if bowling, then not pregnant. Sorry, I said pregnant before I meant not pregnant. Because who's going to go bowling when his wife is sitting at home pregnant? 
and getting ready to give birth. You know, what kind of a jerkwad would do that? So, Tom goes bowling if his wife isn't pregnant. If not pregnant, then bowling. And Tom goes bowling, then his wife isn't pregnant. And we contrapose both of those. And now we have opposite signs on both sides of the horseshoe. We have a negative P with a positive B and a negative B with a positive P. And we have a positive B with a negative P and a positive P with a negative B. I'm trying not to say that as fast as I just did. You could give yourself some kind of concussion or something, or at least pull a muscle in your tongue. But when we have opposite signs on the opposite sides of the horseshoe, that means that we have an affirmative duty, a negative antecedent with a positive consequent. Affirmative duties force us to do something, but because it's biconditional, we can't have both B and P. We can't have both. We can't use the right side rule because we have two separate rules that say B gets rid of P and P gets rid of B. So that means we must do something, but we can't do both. We have a mutual exclusion in the second half and we have an affirmative duty in the first half. And just recognizing what an affirmative duty looks like. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, okay, I always have to have an affirmative duty first and a mutual exclusion second, you're being simplistic about this and you're not thinking about what it means. You're looking for some sort of childish crutch to get you through. You have to be alert to what the plain, ordinary meaning of the words are because you could reverse this. You could say, Tom's wife isn't pregnant if and only if he does go bowling, and you would end up with your mutual exclusion first and your affirmative duty second. It doesn't matter what comes first and what comes second. What matters is negative P and B are the antecedent consequent relationship in rule one, and B negative P will be the antecedent consequent in the second statement. They switch positions. This consequent B becomes the antecedent and negative P becomes the consequent where it was the antecedent of B before. They switch places. That's what a biconditional looks like, and it doesn't matter the order that they come in. Okay, so that affirmative duty forces us to do something, and the mutual exclusion prevents us from doing both. What does that mean? That means you have to do one of these two things, but you cannot do both of them because B excludes P and P excludes B. So you must do one of two things. Exactly one of two things must occur, either B or P. You can't have both, and you also can't have neither because you have the affirmative duty to do one of them. Is that all starting to make just a little tiny bit more sense for you? Gosh, I hope so. Um, Anyway, there are three ways that we can state biconditionals in ways that should be apparent to us now, that we should recognize as soon as we see them. If and only if is the first one because it means whatever is in that statement or in that premise is both the if antecedent and the only or then consequent. The second is both or neither telling us that we're going to have a same sign biconditional. A proves B, B proves A. I'm going to have both. And then when I contrapose those, neither. Negative B proves negative A, negative A proves negative B. And then the must do one of two things. When I'm told that I am required to do one of two things, requiring me or telling me I must do something creates an affirmative duty. And telling me that I can only do one of the two means that I have a mutual exclusion. Doing one prevents me from doing the other. So I'll be doing exactly one of two things. So hopefully that was enough to clarify it, or at least hopefully the ability to watch this over and over and over. Don't look for overly simplistic, hardcore, absolute rules for patterns in the symbols. It doesn't happen. It's fluid. It's language. It's a little bit tricky at times. But what you can do is get yourself in the habit of looking at the plain, ordinary meaning of the words. And when the words mean both or neither, must do one of two things, or when the words mean if and only if, that means you've got a biconditional. With any luck, that'll start to stick a little better. And if it doesn't stick a little bit better, you'll at least know well enough to come to class, make an appointment, see me during office hours, and try to get some further clarity in a one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you have any questions, you know where to find me. 
Thanks for your time.